All right, so we're gonna do E23, which is our applications of quadratic equations and functions. So last time we went over how to get a quadratic equation into vertex form so that we could easily graph it um, and identify the vertex, the max or min value, and all that good stuff. Now, we don't always wanna use completing the square because completing the square is just a little bit horrible. And we would never want to have to do completing the square with um, functions that look like these two at the top of this page. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a shortcut way to find the vertex and then we can use that vertex to write the equation in vertex form. Okay, So that's where we're headed um, and hopefully that will make our word problems a little bit easier knowing we don't have to go through the completing the square process. So um, let me go ahead and give you the shortcut. My pen will work here. Okay, When solving um, applications we can use a shortcut method to easily find the vertex of a quadratic function. Okay, our shortcut is that our vertex, which remember we call HK, oh, whoops, not HFK, goodness, the ordered pair HK, our shortcut says that this is equal to negative B over 2A and F of negative B over 2A <clears throat> for any quadratic function f of x that's equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So notice, anytime we're given a quadratic function, which looks like ax squared plus bx plus c, all we need to know basically is our leading coefficient and our x term coefficient, our a and our b, and we can use a shortcut to find the vertex. Okay? And then once we know the vertex, we should be able to, to write it in vertex form. Because remember, for vertex form, all we need to know is the leading coefficient and basically the vertex. So once we know a, h, and k, we should, we should be able to write it in this form. Okay, so here's our little shortcut <clears throat> deal here. Make sure to note what the leading coefficient is when you write it in vertex form. Because remember, that leading coefficient, we're going to write out here in front of the parentheses. Okay. The other thing, we find the vertex using the shortcut, and then once we know the leading coefficient in the vertex, then we just plug it into vertex form. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on um, these next couple of problems. We're going to go ahead and use the shortcut to find the vertex, and then we're going to use the leading coefficient and the vertex to write this function in vertex form. Okay, so first thing I want to do is find my vertex. Remember our vertex using the shortcut we know is equal to negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. So that means that my h value is negative b over 2a, which in this case my b is negative 12. So if I take the opposite of negative 12, that's going to end up positive, all over 2 times my a, which is negative 4. And then I just simplify. So opposite of negative 12 is positive 12 over 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. And then I reduce top and bottom by 4, which gives me negative 3 halves. Okay, so that's my h value of my vertex. Now I want to find the k. The k value I get by doing f of negative b over 2a, meaning that value that we just found, we're going to plug it back into the function. So this means we're going to do f of negative 3 halves. So if I plug negative 3 halves back into my function up here, <coughs> excuse me, notice what I'm going to end up with, I'll go ahead and write it below here so we don't have a line that just goes on forever and ever and ever. I'm going to get negative 4 times x squared, which my input here is negative 3 halves squared minus 12 times negative 3 halves plus 9. And then I just need to simplify this. Okay, So negative 3 halves squares, squared sorry, gives me 9 fourths and then over here, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together. Uh, negative 12 times negative 3 halves gives me positive 36 halves plus 9. And then notice I can reduce. Here uh, I have a 4 on top and bottom. So I can reduce 4 goes into negative 4, negative 1 times. 4 goes into 4, 1 times. So negative 1 times 9 leaves me with um, negative 9. My second equation reduces, 2 goes into 36 18 times, and then I have this positive 9. Notice I have a positive and negative 9, so this just equals 18. So this is my k value. So now that I know my h and my k, I know my vertex. Okay. 
excuse me. So this means that my vertex is negative 3 halves 18. And now I want to go ahead and write my vertex form of this function. So remember, vertex form looks like f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So I need to know my leading coefficient, which in this case is negative 4. And then I plug in the h and the k that I just found. So x minus my h value, which is negative 3 halves squared, plus my k value, which is 18. And then I just simplify. So this is negative 4 times x plus 3 halves squared plus 18. So this is the vertex form of this line, which I'm going to go ahead and write up here so it's all together with my other answer. So f of x is equal to negative 4 times x plus 3 halves squared plus 18. So I was able to use the shortcut to find my vertex, and then once I know my vertex, I use my vertex values and my leading coefficient to write it in vertex form. So from here, it would be really easy to find x and y intercepts, maximum minimum values, axis of symmetry, all of that good stuff. Okay, so let's look at another one. On the next page, okay, now here I'm going to rewrite this because a lot of people have a problem when they just see a number under an x or an x squared. This is the same thing as g of x is equal to 1 half x squared. The 2 is on the bottom, so if I pull out the coefficient, okay, the coefficient on the top is a 1. So 1 half x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay, so I'm going to use my shortcut again to find my vertex. I'm looking for hk, which remember is the same as negative b over 2a. And here I'm going to use a g because this is a g function. g of negative b over 2a. Okay, so to find my h, I do negative b over 2a. My b here is negative 4. So I do the opposite of negative 4 all over 2 times my a, which is 1 half. And then I'm just going to simplify. Okay, The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, and 2 halves equals 1. 4 over 1 is 4. So that's my h value. Now I need to find my k value which I find by plugging my h value back into my function. So I'm going to do g of negative b over 2a, which we found to be 4. So I'm going to do g of 4, which means I'm going to plug 4 back into my original function. So that gives me 4 squared over 2 minus 4 times 4 plus 8. And then I just simplify. So this is 16 over 2 minus 16 plus 8. 16 over 2 is 16, I'm sorry, <laughs> 16 over 2 is 8, minus 16 plus 8, okay? So notice 8 minus 16 gives me negative 8, plus 8 gives me 0, okay? So my k value is 0, my h value is 4, which means that my vertex is the point 4, 0. Now that I know my vertex, I want to write it in vertex form. Okay, so again, remember vertex form, I do f of x, I'm sorry, g in this case, we're not using an f. Let me see, let me start over. g of x is equal to my leading coefficient a times quantity x minus h squared plus k. So here my leading coefficient, remember, was 1 half times x minus my h value, which is 4 squared plus my k, which in this case is 0. Okay, so when I simplify, I'm going to go ahead and write it up here. My vertex form of this line is g of x is equal to 1 half times the quantity x minus 4 squared. Notice I don't need to put that plus 0. Okay, anytime it's 0, we don't have to write it. So I found my vertex by using the shortcut. Once I know my vertex and my leading coefficient, I can write it in vertex form. So there's one here for you all to try. I'll give you a minute and then we'll go over it, okay? All right, so this practice one, the first thing I need to do is find my vertex, which remember is my hk. We use the shortcut, which is negative b over 2a to find my h. When I plug in the values, you should get negative 1. Okay, so my h value or my x value of my vertex is negative 1. 
Now I need to find my k value. To find my k value, I plug that negative 1 back into the function. When I plug negative 1 back into the function and simplify, I end up with 2. So that tells me that my vertex is the point negative 1, 2. And now I need to write the function in vertex form. So remember to write it in vertex form. I only need to know three things. I need to know my leading coefficient and my h and my k. Here my leading coefficient was 3. My h value is negative 1. And my k value was 2. So when I plug those in, my vertex form should be 3 times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 2. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so now that we know how to use the shortcut, I'm not going to make you um, go through the completing the square process unless I specifically ask you to on a test. Okay, so that's what this little disclaimer down here says. From this point on, you may use the shortcut to get the function in vertex form. However, if I ask you to use completing the square method on an exam, I expect you um, to do it or you won't receive full credit. Okay, I don't know that on this exam I would have you use completing the square. I think that was on the last exam that I specifically asked for it. Um, however, you do need to keep, remember, keep that completing the square fresh, okay, because you will be required um, to do it again for your final, okay, and I will not ask you to do completing the square on a really nasty problem, okay, for uh, word problems, definitely use a shortcut. So let's go ahead and look at an applied uh, problem, okay, the first one we're going to look at is height of a rocket. It says a model rocket is launched with initial velocity of 100 feet per second from the top of a hill that is 20 feet high. Its height in feet, t seconds after it has been launched, oops, not launches, launched, is given by the function s of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 100t plus 20. Determine the time at which the rocket reaches its maximum height and find the maximum height. Then determine when the rocket will hit the ground. So they're asking us to find three things. Okay, on these last two sentences, it says determine the time at which the rocket reaches its maximum height. So the first thing we're doing is determining the time. Okay, then it says, and then find the maximum height. Okay, and then it says determine when it will hit the ground. Okay, so there's three things I'm finding. So anytime you see the word maximum or minimum, you should be thinking vertex. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and label what my vertex represents. Okay, they've already simplified the function for me. I don't have to plug in velocity and ending height and beginning height and all that stuff. They gave me the function, but I have to know what does the h value represent and what does the k value represent. So here, notice we're plugging in t. T means time, so that would be our H value. And given the time, our output, or our K value, is going to be its height. Okay. Half the battle is knowing what these variables represent. Because when they ask you to find one, you have to know which one stands for which, otherwise you're not going to get the right answer, or you're going to get your answers backwards. Okay. My math lab will give you two boxes. You'll enter one answer in one box, one answer in the other. I have lots of students who miss these problems because they put the wrong answer in the wrong box. So make sure you know what each variable represents first. Okay, so given that information, now I can go ahead and label. So I know my time is going to be h and my height is going to be k. So down here when it says determine the time, we're looking for h. And then when it says find the maximum height, that's going to be our k value. So we need to know both of those. And then the last thing they ask is then determine when it will hit the ground. Remember when it hits the ground, that means that its height is going to be 0. Okay? Not h, I shouldn't use h. Here we're using s of t. So I'm just going to say my height, which is my s of t, um, is going to equal 0. Okay? So um, to determine that one, we're just going to be solving for like an x-intercept, or you can use quadratic formula. Before we get to that one, let's go ahead and find our vertex, and I'm going to use the shortcut. Okay? So remember our vertex is equal to negative b over 2a, and then here since I'm using an s function, I'm going to say s of negative b over 2a to find my k. So to find my h value, negative b over 2a, my b here is 100. So negative b would be negative 100 all over 2 times my a, which here is negative 16. On your homework, it may tell you to round your answers. Um, but for this one, I'm, I'm just going to wait and see what my answer is, and then I'll round it accordingly. Okay. All right, so here, negative 100 on top, 
on bottom I end up with negative 32. So I'm going to go ahead and get a decimal for this. If I do 100 divided by 32, um, that gives me 3.125. Okay, so this is my H value. So what this is representing is the time in which my rocket reaches its maximum height. So I'm going to go ahead and label this. This is 3.25 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that because that's one of my answers. This was my H. So that's my time. Now I want to find my K value. To find my K value, I take my H value, plug it back into the function. So I'm going to do S of negative B over 2A, which we found to be um, 3.125. So if I plug 3.125 back into my function, my function says to do negative 16 times 3.125 squared plus 100 times 3.125 plus 20. Okay, And then I'm just going to simplify. So here when I simplify, I get negative 16 times 3.125 squared is 9.7656 uh, two five, and I'm not going to round to the very very end. Okay, plus 100 times 3.125 is going to give me 312.5 plus 20. Okay, when I multiply negative 16 and 9 point mess, I end up with negative 156.25 plus 312.5 plus 20. Now when I combine all of these, I'm just going to skip a few steps. When I combine all of these, what I end up with is 176.25. Okay, that's a decent decimal place, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Remember, we're solving for k, which in our problem represents the height. So that means when I hit 3.125 seconds of time, I reach my maximum height, which we just found to be 176.25 feet. Okay. Or in other words, what we just found is that our vertex for this problem uh, would be 3.125, 176.25. Okay, just to put it all in perspective. So we found our H, we found our K, so we know the time and we know the maximum height. The other thing it asked us to find is to find um, when the rocket will hit the ground. So we want to set this thing equal to zero because that's when it hits the ground. And there's two ways you can do it. You can set your original function equal to zero and either factor use quadratic formula or you can write this in vertex form and set that equal to zero. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use vertex form because it seems a little bit easier to me. If you want to use the original and set it equal to zero and use a quadratic formula, that's fine too. It's totally up to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and write this in vertex form. To write this in vertex form, remember we would write s of t is equal to my leading coefficient, which here is negative 16, times x minus my h, which is 3.125, quantity squared, plus my k, which is 176.25. Okay. Then I want to go ahead and set it equal to zero. So I have 0 is equal to negative 16 times x minus 3.125 squared plus 176.25. And then remember, I need to isolate the thing that's being squared. So I'm going to go ahead and move my whole squared quantity term to the other side. So that will become a positive 16 times x minus 3.125 quantity squared equals 176.25. And then I'm going to divide off my 16. When I divide off my 16, I end up with x minus 3.125 quantity squared equals, um, let me look at my cheat sheet here, 11.015625. And then remember, to undo the square, we take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root, don't forget your plus or minus. So that will give me x minus 3.125 equals plus or minus. When I take the square root of 11 point nasty, I end up with 3.3189795, and that actually keeps going. But I'm just going to keep at least like five or six decimal places so my answer is accurate. And then the next thing I need to do is move my 3 to the other side. 
So I have x is equal to, when I move my 3.125 over, it becomes positive. So I get 3.125 plus or minus 3.31897.95. Dot, dot, dot. And then I need to get my two answers. Okay, so if I work this out, if I do 3.125 plus 3.3189, if I add those two together, I end up with 6.4439 and some more decimal places. If I subtract them, 3.125 minus 3.31, I end up with a negative. I get negative 0 0.139 and some more stuff, okay? So remember what we're finding is the time in which it hits the ground, the time in which my rocket goes up and comes back down, okay? So I can't have a negative time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw that answer out, okay? No negative time, I'm just gonna put down here, can't have negative time. Okay, which means the time in which mine hits the ground is going to be this first answer I got. And I'm going to go ahead and round it um, to like three decimal, well, let's do like two decimal places. Okay, so that means that 6.44 seconds is when my rocket will hit the ground. Okay, so let's quickly go over what we did and then we'll look at another one. So we read through the problem, figure out what our vertex stands for. What's our X value? What's our Y value? Once we know those, then we see what the problem's asking us for. Here it wanted both. It needed to know the time that it reaches its maximum height and its maximum height. So we solve for H, that gives us our time. We solve for K, that gives us our maximum height. And then the last thing it wanted to know is when it hits the ground. So we just set the function equal to zero and solve. If we get a negative answer, we throw it out because we can't have negative time. Okay, let's look at another way. On this next one, we're looking at minimizing cost. It says, classic furniture concepts has determined that when X hundred wooden chairs are built, build, built, I have lots of typos, don't I? Built. The average cost per chair is given by C of X is equal to 0.1x squared minus 0.7x plus 1.625, where c of x is in hundreds of dollars. How many chairs should be built in order to minimize the average cost? Okay, so again, we need to figure out what our vertex stands for. Okay. Okay, in this problem, our x is our input. Okay, and here it says x is hundred wooden chairs. So I'm going to go ahead and just label X as um, hundreds of chairs. Okay. And then it says where C of X is in hundreds of dollars. Okay. Hundreds of dollars. So whatever we get for those two answers, um, if we were to get, say, an answer of two, then that means it would be 200 chairs or $200. So make sure you know if there's some kind of stipulation like that so you know to modify your answer. Okay, so now that we know what each thing stands for, let's see what they're asking us to solve for. They're asking us to find how many chairs. So if we're looking for how many chairs, that's our H value, right? That's how many hundreds of chairs do we need to produce. So remember, using our shortcut, when we look for our vertex, it's negative b over 2a, and in this case, c of negative b over 2a. So if all we need is our h, then all we need to find is negative b over 2a. We don't even care about the k value because it's not asking us. So I'm going to go ahead and do negative b over 2a, which in this case, my b is negative 0.7. So I'm going to do the opposite of negative um, 0.7 all over 2 times my a, which is 0.1. So I end up with positive 0.7 divided by positive 0.2, which gives me 3.5. Now remember, this is my h value, which we found to be in hundreds of chairs. So that means we have 3.5 hundreds chairs. Now, that's a weird way to say it. 
it's not an even 300 it's 3.500 so a better way to get an answer here would be to say this is the same as 3.5 times 100 which when I work that out gives me 350 so this means I need to produce 350 chairs in order to minimize to get that minimum cost of producing chairs okay does that make sense here I didn't have to figure out um, what our actual average cost would be per chair so that's good easy problem right okay let me do one more and then I'll have you all try something so this next one is all about profit maximizing profit now instead of giving you just an easy profit function they give you the revenue function and the cost function and you have to find the pro uh, the profit function which isn't that bad okay to figure out how much profit you make without looking at these equations and getting frustrated just think about it if I want to know how much money I make first of all I need to know how much money is coming in what's my revenue and then I have to know what what am I spending out of my pocket what's my cost okay and I take how much money I have coming in and I subtract how much money I have going out and whatever I have left over that's how much money I'm making that's my total profit so that's all these um, equations are saying to find our total profit we take our total revenue and we subtract our total cost so if they give you a revenue function and a cost function you subtract the uh, cost function from the revenue and that gives you your product function and then we can do the whole vertex thing so here it says um, in business profit is the difference between revenue and cost that is where X is the number of units sold find the maximum profit and the number of units that must be sold in order to yield the maximum profit okay so I want to go ahead and write over here that my vertex represents my X value represents units okay and my Y value or my K value my output here is my profit or my money okay so I'm just gonna put profit that way I know how to label my answers so here we want to find the maximum profit okay and we also want to find the number of units that must be sold in order to get that maximum profit which means that what we're looking for my maximum profit would be my K value and the number of units that gets me that maximum profit would be my H value so here I need to find both okay so first I'm going to go ahead and find my H value oh wait I can't I can't what do I have to do first here we're looking for a profit function they're giving me revenue they're giving me cost so to get my profit function just like above P of X is the same as R of X or my revenue minus my C of X which is my cost so R of X is just 5x minus my cost function now because I have three terms in my cost function I have to use parentheses because I'm subtracting all of them not just the first one okay so I'm gonna go ahead and write in my cost function and then to simplify I'm going to distribute that negative so I end up with 5x minus 0.001x squared plus, no, not plus, distribute the negative, minus 1.2x minus 60. And then I can combine uh, my x terms. So that means my profit function is, I'm going to write it in descending order, so negative 0.001x squared plus um, 3.8x minus 60. Okay. So here is my profit function. Okay. Um, and then I need to go ahead and figure out what my H and my K are since that's what they asked me for. So my H value is equal to negative B over 2A. Now don't go back and use one of your original. Here we're using a profit function. So once you find the profit function, that's the function you use to find your H and your K. So the B of my profit function is 3.8. So I need to do negative B, which is negative 3.8, all over 2 times my A, which is negative 0.001. Okay, so this gives me negative 3.8 on top. On bottom, negative 0.002. When I divide these, a negative over a negative gives me a positive, And this happens to equal 1900.
so remember our h represents the number of units which was one of the things they asked me for so now i can go ahead and say that i need nineteen hundred units in order to get a maximum profit now i want to figure out what is that maximum profit so to figure out my maximum profit i use my k my k value says to take my h value and plug it back into my function which is my profit so i'm going to do what would be the profit of 1900 units which means i plug 1900 into my profit function so negative 0 0.001 times 1900 squared plus 3.8 times 1900 minus 60. okay 1900 squared <coughs> excuse me actually i'm just going to write out what these what these are we should know how to simplify from here on out i would do 1900 squared whatever that number is multiply it by negative 0.001 which gives us negative 3610 when i multiply 3.8 and 1900 together together it gives me 7220 minus 60 and then i just combine all three of these numbers when i combine all three of these numbers what i end up with is um 3550 so my k value is 3550 which means that our maximum profit is 3550 dollars okay so if i pr produce 1900 units my maximum profit is $3,550, okay? All right, so there is two for you to try. Um, one like the one I just did, and then uh, one where you have to find the vertex and also when the projectile hits the ground. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to work on those, and then we'll go over them. All right, so on the first one, um, we need to find the number of units and the profit. So we use our revenue and our cost functions. When we subtract the cost function from the revenue, it gives us a profit function that is equal to negative 0.5x squared plus 40x minus 3. Then we use that function to find our h and our k. Our h, we do negative b over 2a, which should give us 40 units. And our k, we take that 40 units that was our h value, plug it back into our profit function, which when we simplify should give us 797 dollars make sure you label dollars and units that kind of thing okay so this one's just like the one i did um, above it on the same page um, number two is a little bit different we're talking about time and height of a ball that's thrown upward so here the ball is going to go up it's going to reach a maximum height and then it's going to come back down so the time is going to be our h variable and our height is going to be our k variable so here it's asking us to determine the time and find the maximum height. So we need to know H and K. And then it also asks us when the ball will reach the ground. So we're going to worry about that in a minute. First, we figure out our H and our K. So we do negative B over 2A, which gives us an H value of 0.625 seconds. And then we take that 625 seconds, plug it back into our S function, and that gives us our K value. Okay, a little bit of simplifying. Notice I didn't get rid of any decimals until the very end, in which case I actually didn't get rid of any decimals there either because we only had two. But don't round throughout the problem. Wait till the very, very end and then round however the problem um, tells you to. So here we end up with a K value of 12.25, which means that the maximum height this ball reaches is 12.25 feet. Okay, so everything in pink was dealing with our vertex. Then the next thing that it wants us to find is figure out when this ball will hit the ground. So there's two ways you can do it. You can take your original S function, set it equal to zero and do quadratic formula, um, or you can use the vertex form. I use the vertex form. Remember vertex form is equal to A times the quantity x minus h plus k. So here my leading coefficient was a negative 16, so that's why that's outside the parentheses. I do x minus my h, which was 0.625, plus my k, which was 12.25. Then I know that it's hitting the ground, which means that the height of this function at that moment is zero. So I set it equal to zero, and then I just solve. I move my um, 
big huge term that has my x within it to the other side that way i have a positive 16 then i can divide off that 16 which gives me my squared function is equal to a decimal and then to get rid of the squared i square root both sides when i do that don't forget your plus or minus okay depending on what your function looks like it's not always the minus that we throw out okay so make sure um, you always remember to put that plus or minus Okay. And then I move my constant term to the other side. So I get 0.625 plus or minus 0.875. When I work out my two answers, I get 1.5 and I get a negative. Time can't be negative, so I throw out that answer, which means that the ball will come down and hit the ground after 1.5 seconds. Okay. All right. So that is the end of 2.3. I went ahead and put this nice little boom sign to help you remember these are things you need to remember. You should know the vertex formula, our shortcut. Um, it will not be provided for you on an exam. So you're responsible for knowing not only what the vertex, how to find it using the shortcut, but also what vertex form is. Okay. Okay, you should now be able to finish the 2.3 uh, homework in my math lab, which is just a regular homework assignment. There's no worksheet. If you have any problems or questions, um, let me know and I'll help.